Hey guys, welcome back. In the last video, we covered the difference between CAD or computer aided design and CAM or computer aided manufacturing. And I walked you through how Fusion 360 fuses what was typically two solutions together into one integrated solution. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the fundamentals of modeling that you need to understand if you're going to be using Fusion 360 as your manufacturing solution. Those will include sketches, which are typically two-dimensional geometry, features, which take this two-dimensional geometry and form three-dimensional solids or components, and joints that join multiple components together and establish their relationship as a position and their motion. With that, let's jump into it. On my screen now is a blank canvas. It's what you'd expect to see the first time you launch Fusion 360, simply an empty Fusion document. We're going to start by creating our first component by right-clicking the top node of the browser and selecting New Component. With our new empty component created, we can create our first sketch by selecting Sketch on the toolbar. Clicking Sketch is like picking up a pencil and saying, I want to draw, without defining the piece of paper or selecting a piece of paper to draw on. This is the state we're in now with Fusion 360. We have a pencil in hand, but we haven't chosen where we want to do our sketching. In our graphics area, you should see three orange planes. Think of these as sheets of paper to sketch on. I'll pick the plane with the Z axis, that's the blue axis, pointing away from it. And now we're in sketch mode and we can see our sketch commands on the toolbar. I'm going to start by selecting the rectangle command from the toolbar. By default, we're creating a two point rectangle, so I'll click to set the first point and then start to move my mouse to set the second point of the rectangle. At this point, we could either enter the values for the height and width or click a second time to set that second point. I'll type two on my keyboard to enter the height of the rectangle. However, instead of hitting tab and entering a dimension for the width, I'm going to hit enter and complete my rectangle. At this point, we have a blue rectangle. These colors actually are very important to understand. The light blue shading indicates that we have a closed profile. It's not an open profile. More importantly, the darker blue edges indicate the sketch isn't fully defined. I can demonstrate this by selecting the bottom edge of the sketch and moving its position and size. Our goal is to fully define all of our sketches. So let me show you how. I'll start by selecting the bottom right corner of the rectangle and snapping it to the origin. Three edges of my rectangle have now changed to black, meaning they're fully defined. If I try and move them, I can't. However, I've not fully defined the width of my rectangle so, the far right edge is still blue, and I can move it. To fully define my rectangle, I'll select the dimension command, select the top edge of the rectangle, click to pick a location to place my dimension, and enter a value of 4 inches. Now, with this final dimension in place, my sketch is fully defined, and it's changed to black. Let's click finish sketch. We're now ready to take this two-dimensional sketch and form a three-dimensional feature using the extrude command. I'll use the arrow to drag the depth and enter a dimension of a quarter inch. I can hit enter and I've quickly created my first feature. My timeline now shows a sketch followed by my extrude feature. Next, I want to create a hole centered on my block that cuts entirely through the block. I'm going to walk you through the process of how we capture that intent while we do the modeling. Again, I'll start with a sketch, and again, I'm prompted to select a plane to sketch on. 
However, in this case, I can now sketch on my primary planes or the planar faces created by my part. I'll select the top face. Next, I'm going to create a circle and I can select a center point for the circle and a diameter of half an inch. So now I have a circle and it's locked in at half an inch, but it's floating in space. I want to center it on the rectangle. There are a number of ways I can achieve this. I'm going to do this by creating construction geometry. You'll find as you use the tool, construction geometry becomes an important way of fully defining your sketches. I'll select the line command and draw a line from one corner of the rectangle to the other. My line's already black. Why? Because we fully defined it, snapping it to the endpoints of our rectangle. Now it's time to center our circle on the line. While I could drag the circle and snap it to the center point of that line, I want to show you how to directly create constraints. I'll select the midpoint constraint from the toolbar, select the center of the circle, and select my line. You may now for the first time have noticed the constraint icon next to the circle. Or maybe you already picked up on the coincident icons next to the end point of the line when we created it on the fly. I encourage you to dig into all of the types of constraints we can create in Fusion 360 to capture our design intent. The last little bit of model hygiene that we need to do is mark that line for construction. So I'll select it, select for construction, to simply tell the system this geometry is being used to help us define or fully define our sketch. It's not actually going to be used for our features. With that, instead of finishing the sketch, I can go straight to my solids command and select extrude. I'll select the circle and begin to drag it away from the model to create geometry or through the model to remove geometry. I could enter a dimension to set the depth. However, I started this process by saying I wanted to capture my intent. And my intent was for this hole to cut entirely through the block. So I'll set the extent to all to tell Fusion I want this to cut through all of my geometry. Why did this matter? Let's take a look by making some changes to our model. My intent was for the hole to be centered on the rectangle. If I edit the sketch and change the width of my rectangle from 4 inches to 6 inches, my intent is preserved. The rectangle stays centered. And if I change the height of my rectangle from a quarter inch to one inch, again, my intent is preserved. The hole still goes entirely through all of my model. Now our first two operations required us to create sketches. However, not all operations require sketches. To demonstrate, I'll select the fillet command and select the four vertical edges. You'll notice I can even highlight and select an edge that's hidden by my model. I'll drag the arrow to set the radius to half an inch and select OK. Well, that's a simple component, but we've covered some fundamentally important concepts in terms of how we create sketches, define sketches using geometry constraints and dimensions, and how those sketches form features, and we even looked at some features that don't require sketches. I'd like to now show you how we assemble multiple components together. To begin the assembly process, we're going to start by transitioning from having our single component active to having our entire document active. Now, when I select the component, I can freely move it in space in the same way I could initially freely move my sketches before I'd fully define them. 
With sketches, I started by attaching them to the origin. We'll do the same by grounding this component as a foundation for our subsequent components. We can do this by right-clicking in the browser and selecting Ground. Because I'd arbitrarily moved my component around, I'm prompted to ground it in its new location by selecting Capture Position or in the initial location where I'd drawn it by selecting Continue. I'll select Continue. With a foundation set to build on, I'm now going to copy and paste a second instance of this component and then move it up above my previous component. Again, if I select the component, I can arbitrarily move it around because I haven't done anything to define its relationship to the previous component. With sketches, we use dimensions and constraints to define the relationship between geometry. With components, we define their relationship to each other using joints. So let's activate the joint command. And again, I'll select continue to disregard how I move that component around in space. I can then select a reference location known as a joint origin at the center of the circle on my top block. And a second one on the bottom block. As we define the relationship between these two points, I can set a fixed distance between them of two inches and even go to the motion tab where we establish rotary motion between those points. Now, when I select my second component, I can rotate it with the degree of freedom that was left open in my joint. This is an important thing to understand if you're coming from another CAD CAM system. Many CAD CAM systems slowly constrain motion, one axis at a time, one rotation at a time. Fusion captures all of the motion within a single joint, and that joint defines which axes of motion are left open for the component to continue to move. It's an opposite way of thinking of things, but a very powerful way of thinking of things. So let's recap. We learned about sketches and how to fully define them using dimensions and constraints. A fully defined sketch is black. We learned about features, both features that need sketches and features that can be applied directly to our models. When changes were made to our model, we saw how properly capturing our intent with our dimensions and constraints resulted in models that updated in a predictable way. And lastly, we looked at how we use joints to create a relationship between two components that capture both its position and its motion. I hope you've found this brief overview of the modeling side of Fusion to be a help. In our next video, we'll move on to looking at the manufacturing part of Fusion. I encourage you to engage with me in the comments below, share the videos with others, and give it a thumbs up if you found it useful. Cheers.